Buongiorno a tutte e a tutti, vi do il benvenuto a questo forum di Terra Madre sugli orti slow food nel mondo. Sono Annalisa Donorio, coordino la rete di orti scolastici di slow food in Italia e sono molto felice di poter introdurre questo appuntamento perché slow food promuove la coltivazione di orti nel mondo da quasi 20 anni, ha sviluppato progetti in molti paesi e ora sta lavorando per rendere questa rete di persone ancora più forte e unita. Questo è il primo appuntamento di un percorso e il moderatore e gli ospiti di oggi ci faranno sentire che, che gli orti sono tuttora un progetto su cui Slow Food vuole puntare per tutelare la biodiversità, fare educazione e, e promuovere la propria filosofia. Adesso, prima di, di passare la parola ai relatori, due informazioni tecniche. Eh, il forum si tiene in modalità webinar, quindi i microfoni e le videocamere del pubblico sono spenti. La prima parte del forum è dedicata agli interventi dei relatori. Negli ultimi 20 minuti c'è lo spazio per le domande. Quindi siete invitati ad inoltrare le domande utilizzando la, la chat e scrivendo a All Panelists. Per, per chi ci segue su Zoom è disponibile la traduzione simultanea in italiano, inglese, francese, spagnolo, russo e azero. E la potete attivare cliccando la lingua desiderata sull'icona a forma di globo che trovate in basso. Per la traduzione simultanea in italiano dovete selezionare il coreano, per quella in azero selezionate il cinese. Vi ricordo che siamo in diretta streaming anche, su, anche sul sito di Terra Madre Salone del Gusto e sul canale di Slow Food di YouTube. Quindi vi lascio la parola al moderatore, è di Mukibi, um, è vicepresidente di Slow Food, membro del Comitato Esecutivo Internazionale, ma soprattutto quello che ci interessa oggi è che è stato ed è tuttora parte attiva del movimento degli orti Slow Food in Africa. Quindi gli passo la parola e auguro a tutti un buon ascolto, un buon forum. Can you hear me? Uh, sì, I... perfetto, Edi. Oh. Because I, I didn't hear anything. Now I can I can hear something. Okay. Um, I humbly welcome all of you to uh, to to this uh, forum on slow food gardens, and uh, it's an interesting uh, moment that we come together to discuss one of the most important aspects of. Uh, Uh, food education in the world, and these are the Slow Food Gardens, a network of gardens that has been uh, growing uh, uh, quite uh, uh, fast, but also steadily in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, the Slow Food Gardens um, have grown in different parts of the world, meaning uh, with different meanings. And I can say that in different communities, uh, slow food gardens have different meanings. There, in some communities, there are gardens which are, um, uh, are grown to produce and avail fresh uh, vegetables, fresh food, 
to the communities. In some communities, there are gardens which have grown to, to, as a sign of hope to the communities. And in other parts of the world, these gardens are grown as part of resistance to the industrial agricultural system and the declarance of uh, food sovereignty to the communities. All we can say to us as slow food, the gardens are a very important emblem of change of the food system, which we all long for. And that slow food, uh, we take uh, slow food gardens very, very uh, importantly. And um, because uh, education is one of our main strategic pillars and one of the main tools through which we can achieve food education are these gardens. And um, uh, developing this network of the gardens means coming together from the different walks of life, different backgrounds, different uh, nationalities, uh, different traditions to declare um, uh, a network that brings us, that uh, helps us to share knowledge and that helps us uh, to build a strong and resilient uh, knowledge system that will uh, connect generations, the current and the future generations. Slow food gardens can be described uh, using a 10 point uh, program, which we have called uh, a decalogue, but I always uh, love to use the word 10 point program because uh, these are the points uh, uh, which uh, inspire communities which have been inspired all of us to be part of this growing network of the gardens. One important thing which uh, we need to learn about the gardens is that they are created by a community. It brings together different families. It, uh, the gardens bring together different families, different people, different kinds of wisdom, um, different kinds of wisdom from the older generation and connects the young generation. And we make most of the energy and creativity of the young people in our communities. So we come together as a community and we create these gardens. So it's something which is community-based and it's something which is uh, owned by the communities. And the gardens are more of inclusive ideas or projects which we all uh, take part in in, in in our communities. Another important thing is that they are based on observation. Um, in many case, cases, uh, the gardens are created not by technocrats, but by the people who have observed the environment for so long, who are very creative, and they use that creative eye, and they, they, they put uh, an eye to the ground in the places where they expect to create the gardens and they create something that is living, even in places which in many cases we think something cannot be created. For example, along a footpath, along the concrete floors, people create gardens, people create a living thing in, in, in non-living uh, spaces. So they're based on what we can do, what we can share and which materials are available and which structures we can use uh, as a community to create uh, uh, these gardens. And another important thing about uh, the slow food gardens, as we create a network, we should understand that they are about, uh, they are places of biodiversity. The gardens collect a lot of different species of seeds, a lot of uh, different cultures of people, uh, uh, different uh, uh, people from different climates. They can all take part in, in these gardens. And the gardens provide a very diverse and uh, nutritious, nutritious diet uh, to the communities. And because of this biodiversity, crops can uh, help each other uh, through symbiotic relationships, through um, uh, syntropic uh, planting mechanisms. And then in the end, we don't see any need for the agrochemicals. Once we have crops which can repel um, uh, uh, pests, others can suppress weeds, they all exist in the in the nature, so we need to bring all this bio, uh, all this biodiversity together on the gardens, and again uh, they produce their own seeds. In slow food gardens, in many cases, you under, you realize that seeds are shared uh, among the gardens which are in the network. You find uh, one community garden sharing seeds with school gardens, children bringing school uh, gardens from home, and also one region sharing seeds with others. Uh, with other regions. So the gardens mostly use, utilize uh, native varieties, which are hardy, nutritious, and delicious. And they don't need uh, a lot of chemicals uh, to, uh, to, to produce. 
because these products have, uh, are used to the environment, they are custom to the harsh uh, environment, so they are actually adapted to where we grow them. And then <clears throat> the gardens also produce their, the, the gardens maintain soil fertility. Uh, on top of producing seeds, gardens go ahead to maintain soil fertility because uh, <clears throat> uh, the slow food gardens, they promote so much uh, uh, in situ management of resources, like using uh, the crop residues, the crop refuse, and also the, the scraps as, as uh, uh, compost. <clears throat> in many cases, the weeds which we pluck out from the gardens uh, uh, we use them to make uh, the organic pest repellent because these weeds or these uh, what we call unwanted plants, they also have a, a lot of uses. Uh, this is the beauty of biodiversity. And uh, also uh, the gardens maintain the, uh, the uh, soil microbiology, which is very important in the breakdown of the materials which we find on the surface of the earth. And most of these microorganisms are found underneath the, uh, the surface of uh, the earth. So you cannot maintain soil fertility if you do not maintain soil biology. Otherwise, in many cases, I say that feed the soil to feed you. Keep a healthy soil, keep a living soil to have a living environment and also healthy cropping systems. This is also what we believe in uh, as uh, uh, the network of slow food gardens. Uh, slow food gardens, uh, uh, once you move around to many gardens, one of the most outstanding characteristics of uh, slow food gardens is the attraction of beneficial insects and the, the, the ability to repel the harmful ones. In, uh, you realize that uh, the participants in these gardens, because of the knowledge created, they know which plants do which purpose in the garden. There are those plants which are planted to attract bees for pollination. But again, there are plants like uh, leafy onions or leeks, uh, which in the night repel uh, uh, armyworms or they repel uh, other crawling insects like grasshoppers. And then in the end, you have a system which is well balanced with natural remedies, and that is based on locally available materials. Gardens also save water. When we create slow food gardens, we uh, uh, set up different mechanisms that maintain soil moisture. For example, mulching, rainwater collection, and also the use of uh, traditional irrigation systems like uh, pot irrigation in the desert areas is very uh, common, but also in some of the tropical countries like in Uganda, we've used uh, pot irrigation to ensure that in the times of drought, crops will always have water and also we help to replace the more costly means and also more wasteful uh, means of irrigation. So the gardens should have uh, this element of saving water through uh, the available means. Uh, gardens, uh, when, in many times when you uh, find students or people learning about agriculture, they're in a, they're in a classroom with a, uh, a facilitator in some of the four room, a four corner room, but gardens, the slow food gardens provide an open air environment to learning of, of all ages. So uh, it, 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 they serve as a way of breaking the barrier of the traditional educational system on food and agriculture, whereby we have uh, uh, children go out, we have old people, women and men go out to learn about something pr practically. Some of them can cook and prepare traditional recipes which they want to recover. Others can promote a healthy and uh, uh, diverse diet and also many learn how to prepare fruits and also to take care of the different kinds of trees when they're out there in, the, in, the, in, the na in nature and they are all participating equally and sharing knowledge and experiences openly and address the most pressing issues in the, in the food sector. The gardens are good for us. Once we come into contact with the earth, we get to understand how eating, uh, how, how important it is to make good food choices. And we get to understand how it's important uh, 
to eat healthy. So uh, we, we also get to know what is good for our bodies, what is not good for, for us, what is good for the environment. And then sharing all this knowledge makes our lives better once we get uh, these experiences uh, from the gardens. And lastly, uh, they are a network. We are a global network now. We started uh, with uh, Slow Food Gardens in Africa, 1,000 gardens in Africa, 10,000 gardens in Africa. But one thing we actually have to believe that there is a growing network of gardens all over the world, from USA to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, to North Africa, uh, Latin America, to Europe, in places like Russia, the gardens are a growing network. And we need to embrace this network. We meet, like right now, we, uh, we are meeting, we write to each other. Uh, we, uh, uh, when the pandemic is over, I'm very sure that we will resume our physical meetings. Uh, there are sometimes screenings between food gardens in distant countries, and those ones, especially the global uh, north and south connection, or the global east and west connection. Uh, the gardens provide this kind of network, and we need to uphold uh, this uh, 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 interesting uh, avenue for connecting from one another. This is what, uh, 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 what the slow food, uh, when we talk about slow food, food gardens, this is what we definitely mean. And uh, our workshop or our forum today is about uh, uh, this growing network of gardens. Uh, from uh, USA to Russia to Italy and then to Africa and many other parts of the world. We have very interesting uh, speakers today and uh, we, will be, we will take this opportunity to uh, listen to uh, these speakers about their experience with the, uh, with the slow food gardens in Africa. And um, first, uh, I mean slow food gardens, not only in Africa, but in the whole world. And uh, our first speaker uh, is uh, Neha Shah. Uh, Neha is an elementary educator and has been uh, teaching in the Ann Abo uh, public schools for 15 years. Her um, particular passion is in environmental education, uh, school gardening and farm to school advocacy. Uh, she's also a garden coordinator at Grants Park Elementary School, where she teaches. Neha currently co-chairs the AAPS Farm to Schools uh, Steering Committee, where she supports local uh, procurement efforts. Please, I will, uh, I, I will invite Neha uh, to discuss the importance of school gardening through the lens of the Slow Food USA uh, School Gardens Network. You're welcome, Neha. Thank you, Eddie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here to speak about Slow Food USA School Garden Network. Um, Slow Food USA School Garden Network aims to reconnect youth with their food by teaching them how to grow, cook, and enjoy real food. And through increased confidence, knowledge uh, gain, and skill building, we want to empower children to become active participants in their food choices. And by becoming informed eaters. Today, children will, children will help to make a positive impact on the larger world of food and farming well into the future. And the goal of the Slow Food School Garden Network in USA is to support educators, volunteers, school garden leaders, and, and local slow food chapters to become more effective in sustaining school garden programs in their community. We hope chapters will serve as a local school garden hub of important resources and volunteer assistance, as well as the connector to that facilitates uh, partnerships in local communities. So the importance of curriculum is something that I'm really passionate about and I wanna speak to. Is It's extremely important in school gardens um, in, in that it becomes embedded in our daily lives of children. When learning lessons in the garden and linking them to the important academic areas taught by teachers, this becomes part of their daily learning process and thus intrinsically motivates students to care for our land, our water, our earth, our air. Um, and there are countless connections between the garden and the classroom. 
The Good and Clean curriculum was developed by Slow Food leaders with a grant from Chipotle in 2014. Um, that dramatically increased the impact of the National School Garden Program for Slow Food USA. And they were able to extend um, their reach into communities by offering greater access to garden and food education to children across the country. Um, there were also, they were also able to create a unique school garden leadership conference where 50 absolutely outstanding garden leaders were able to come together to share together their, their stories, their knowledge, um, while learning about the good and, and clean uh, curriculum. And we got to eat really amazing food. Um, so the good curriculum, that focuses on two chapters. There's sensory education and kitchen skills in the garden, and then good means enjoying those pleasures of the healthy and delicious food. The clean curriculum that was created consists of a short introduction with two chapters um, that has basic education skills and knowledge and a slow food garden. And clean is uh, essentially is really paying attention to gardening for sustainability with environmentally conscious practices. Both of those curriculum guides are actually available for download for free on our website. So the FAIR curriculum, that's the last piece here that we're looking to, um, to build right now. And that's needed to allow for good and clean food to be equitable for everybody. So social and ecological justice assigns the rights and duties in the established institutions of our society to ensure fair wages and equitable distribution of resources, which enables people to receive the basic benefits and access to food jobs and security. So social justice and ecological justice help us uh, work towards celebrating diversity in our communities and, and country through food, tradition, culture, and seed sovereignty, the commons also, and the land. So the FAIR curriculum, which is the Slow Food USA Tri-Chair, that's what the Slow Food USA Tri-Chairs are working to launch right now. That's going to encompass content standards uh, for learning geared towards sharing stories and creating some case studies in addition to providing lesson plans and hands-on experiential learning through qualitative data analysis that will provide anecdotal evidence to support this work. FAIR indicates producing food that respects the economic, social, and eco-justice principles. So Slow Food USA believes food should have um, accessible prices for consumers and co-producers, and we expect fair conditions and equitable pay for producers and all workers. Fighting for dignity and economic justice of labor for field, from field to fork. So there should be geographical and equitable access for all communities. And that's what we're trying to encompass in this FAIR curriculum. So the FAIR curriculum should really be embedded in all of the lessons really across the school curriculum um, on a regular basis. So this guide is intended to provide teachers and garden educators with practices and skills to integrate that FAIR mindset into the everyday lessons. And so we define FAIR at Soul Food USA to have multiple, multiple components. We wanna have FAIR access to good and clean food for all peoples, fair payments to farmers and producers for their food and fair wages and working conditions for people working in that food system. And so some of the things that we did last year, we, we know we are in a pandemic and it was unfortunate because many school gardens in the US were closed. And so we, we, we wanted to respond to that in a way that was healthy and happy for kids to still be able to, uh, to access um, you know, lessons. And so last year we launched Slow Food Live, which brought Slow Food into the home with free webinars and conversations led by experts in a skill or topic that you can join, that they could join from anywhere that they had a digital device from. So we created lots of really wonderful um, little videos uh, that are available on our website. And um, one of the things that we focused on last year and launched was Gardens and Animals. 
So we had, um, so actually the tri chairs um, and uh, we created a video together. We did starting seeds and then low tunnels and garden beds. And low tunnels are basically mini greenhouses. They warm the soil and provide a temperature microclimate for growing vegetables. And even though there may be some snow on the ground, the temperature under the low tunnels often just right for the growing, um, for the for growing cool season vegetables like kale or spinach and, and um, beets. So the United States is vast and we have lots of different climates. Um, and I'm in Michigan and we have four seasons here so low tunnels are great for the midwest region and and northeast and other places like that um okay so we did we focused uh the, our videos on um growing like i said the the gardening um so seed starting excuse me uh, low tunnels garden beds and then we did some other really fun videos growing cool weather um, plants, beekeeping, uh, soil was focused on, biodiversity was focused on, plant a seed campaign, um, microgreens, urban gardening and seed saving. So lots of really fun little videos from garden leaders all over the country and we put them together and then um, one of our Slow Food USA wonderful um, uh, uh, employees, uh, Giselle Lord, she actually facilitated a lot of the videos and it was great. So it was really nice to offer that, um, that digital resource for people and the, it lives now in the digital world and we have lots of um, wonderful videos. And there are many other videos that they did, Slow Food Live did last year. Uh, they did some things for kids with, with garden stories, and story and ramen time. Um, there was a focus on health and wellness, change making, um, slow food around the world, food and cooking and beverages. Another thing that we focus on here in the US is the plant to seed campaign. Um, the plant to seed campaign invites school garden educators and individuals to bring biodiversity flavor and history into the gardens. So each year Slow Food puts together a cast of endangered and biodiverse seeds that tell a story. And this year there are five varieties that come from a unique grower, uh, unique growers and landscape. And it tells the story of plants and people. And the Plant to Seed campaign opens the door to understand the importance of biodiversity and issues of food sovereignty through the cultivation and journey of seeds. Um, so each uh, kit is $25 so, uh, so, so people can purchase them. And many kits are supplied to school gardens across the country for free, which is exciting because some people can purchase and then we can allow other um, uh, people who cannot not afford to, to pay for the kit, free garden kits for their gardens, um, so for their school gardens. So this year our focus is on, um, we have an old Carolina tomato and that is grown from small house farm in the US. And then the focusing on the King Philip corn and that is from True Love Seeds. Um, early Scarlet Horn Carrot, that is from the North Circle Seeds Farm. Um, Jilly Nardello, the Jimmy Nardello Pepper uh, from Baker Creek Heritage Seeds. And then uh, the, the Aunt Molly's Ground Cherry from Pine Tree Gardens garden seeds. So there's a lot of really exciting seeds that that um, we focused on this year. And actually, we uh, Slow Food USA just did a seed summit this year for the first time. It was excellent. And um, they actually had a panel discussion where the, all the stories of those seeds were told. And they were just fascinating to hear. And it's amazing that you can have those stories tell the tradition and culture of that seed. And then to be able to have it saved and, and, and distributed across the United States so that we can continue to grow that seed and, and keep it out of that endangered list. It's very exciting. So those seeds, a lot of these seeds come from the Arc of Taste program that Slow Food USA has. And that has a list of endangered seeds. And, and of course, there's a, I think there's an arc of taste, of course, for the world too, but there are a specific um, list too in the US that people are using. And that's it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Nia. It's really important to have uh, a curriculum uh, for the school gardens to make sure that uh, they, 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 what students or pupils or young people fear to do in the garden is inter integrated in the everyday uh, uh, work they do uh, at school. It's really uh, a great 
milestone that Slofford USA has uh, managed to integrate uh, this curricula, the guidance curriculum into the school curriculum. And uh, uh, like I said, uh, we have uh, uh, quite uh, interesting uh, revelations or testimonies or experiences from around uh, the world. Now from USA to Russia, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Anatoly. Uh, Anatoly is uh, a colleague uh, from Russia who coordinates uh, the gardens project, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a gardens project in Russia with over 2,000 uh, children and uh, 159 adults. And these include uh, uh, the supporters and also the participants. Anatoly will speak in Russian with uh, uh, simultaneous um, uh, translation, uh, which is uh, which will be uh, direct, so it may take some quite some time. But let's uh, uh, listen to Anatoly and the experience from Russia. Anatoly. Добрый день всем коллегам, присутствующим сегодня в эфире. Очень рад, что у нас в нашей группе много женщин. Я их вижу, и перед праздником хочу всех поздравить с Международным женским днем 8 марта, желать им всем успехов в работе и, главное, конечно, здоровья. Я занимаюсь образовательными проектами в нашей стране, и, собственно говоря, мы занимаемся этим достаточно давно, и уже есть какой-то определенный опыт, которым хотелось бы, наверное, поделиться. В принципе, как говорят, мы все родом из детства. Можно я переведу Анатолий? Well, good day, everyone. I'm happy to meet you all, my colleagues from all over the world. I'm very happy to see women among us. Uh, and I uh, want to wish you happy 8th of March uh, that is coming, the World Women Independence Day. I'm in charge of educational projects in my country, in Russia, for Slow Food Association. And it has been a long time that we've been working with educational projects. And I will be happy to share my experience with you. Много лет назад в городе, в котором я живу, было всего пять школ, и практически у всех у них были огороды и сады. Но жизнь меняется, и сегодня одна только школа сохранила свою территорию целой, а все остальные попали под застройку. И мне посчастливилось, что когда я учился в школе, у нас был огород, и наш учитель нас многому научил. Поэтому у меня и родилась идея вот, развить проект «Огород на подоконнике». Он идет у нас в городе как образовательный проект. Спасибо. Many... Years ago, in our school, in our town, I live in Lobnia in uh, Moscow Oblast, there were many schools with uh, school gardens, and uh, I was among the students who were lucky to have um, a possibility to work in the school garden, and I learned a lot from my teachers. Unfortunately, now, uh, um, due to construction and uh, urbanization, uh, uh, almost all gardens disappeared. There's only one school left with the uh, uh, garden plot uh, behind the school. And that is why we decided to introduce a project with um, the name uh, The Garden on My Windowsill, taking into consideration that the schools don't have the earth available to have the real garden. Ну, мы когда начали эту работу, то на, начали пробовать ее в школе. Несколько лет поработав в этом направлении, решили, что, в общем-то, эту работу надо начинать гораздо раньше. И мы переключились на детские сады, на старшие группы детских садов. И там этим проектом у нас сегодня занимаются дети, начиная где-то в возрасте с 4,5 лет. В школьной программе это где-то дети до 14 лет. And we started five years ago, and we started in schools. And through the years, we learned that uh, the gardening should be um, introduced much earlier. And that is why we started to work with the nursery schools. 
And today, the kids that are involved in our projects are something like four years and a half, the earliest age, and up to 14 teenagers in the secondary school. Ну, наш проект, он как бы работает как цикличный проект. Вот эта рассада, выращенная на окошке, она затем переходит в школьные огороды или на школьный двор. Цветы, которые рассады выращиваются, высаживаются в школьный двор. Те э, организации, которые имеют возможность высадить это в огород, они высаживают в огород, и следующий этап как бы, нашего проекта – это уже проект в самом огороде, то есть на земле. And our project is a cyclical one. So the plants that are planted on the windowsills, then they are brought into the gardens in, on the flower beds in front of the schools. And some schools decide to plant it on the flower beds. Some schools uh, uh, take uh, the plants home where they can plant it in their private gardens. Ну вот эти проекты мы делаем тематическими. Прошлый год вот, у нас получилось так, что мы получили семена из коллекции ученого с мировым именем Николая Ивановича Вавилова. Нам представили эти семена, и мы как бы вырастили пшеницу, то есть семена, которые прошли опробирование на станции И в этом году как бы, этот проект у нас продолжается, но уже под другим, как бы, скажем так, флагом. Это семена, которые вошли в коллекцию «Ковчег вкуса». And uh, our project every year has a special uh, topic, a special theme. For example, last year was the anniversary of the world-known uh, Russian scientist Nikolai Vavilov. You may know his famous collection in the St. Petersburg Institute of Plants. And last year we planted the seeds from his collection that uh, these seeds were granted from by the research institute to our project. For example, this year we decided to dedicate uh, the project to Arc of Taste seeds and um, in collaboration with the slow food producers we got the seeds that we are planting this year from Arc of Taste um, uh, products. Ну вот такая работа, она позволяет как бы детей вовлечь вообще уже в научный эксперимент, потому что те семена, которые мы получили со станции Полярной, они росли в наших условиях. И ученые были очень заинтересованы в том, чтобы мы вернули какую-то часть выращенных семян, и они смогли бы посмотреть, как повели себя вот эти семена совершенно в другой климатической зоне, и как они, что, что получилось, скажем так. И поэтому ребята участвовали, вообще-то говоря, в научном эксперименте, несмотря на свой маленький возраст. And uh, in spite of the very early age of uh, our participants of the project, we are very proud that they somehow participate in the scientific studies as well. Because, for example, last year, some of the seeds uh, were taken from the polar uh, scientific station. Uh, and the scientists asked us to give the seeds back to them so that they will be able to research what's the difference of the seeds that were kept on the polar station and then they were planted in the uh, climate of Lobnia near Moscow and then uh, back to the polar climate conditions. Ну вот такая работа, она, в общем-то, делает детей увлеченными в том вопросе, которые они смотрят. И даже маленькие ребятки, они делали своеобразный отчет. Они делали отчет рисунками, те, кто не умеет писать в детском саду. И вот прошлый год получилось так, что вот эта пандемия, она внесла много изменений в нашу жизнь, но в наш проект она внесла какой-то плюс, потому что у нас появилось новое направление этого проекта. Это семейные проекты, огород в семье. And, uh... I would like also to mention that kids, uh, they feel uh, 
really involved into the project. They show great interest and it's a great pleasure for us watch them working on Earth. They are also involved, uh, if they cannot be involved into complicated uh, jobs, we ask them to draw pictures and they're very inspired also, always by participating in the project in this way. Unfortunately, last year and this year, the project uh, is changing due to pandemic situation but it brought a new wave to the project as well because it went outside the school walls and it became a family project as well. Ну, в этом году наш проект он расширяется ещё в одном направлении. Мы как бы в связи с тем, что у нас подключилась к нам общественная палата города, А у них был проект работы с детьми, ну, малоподвижными, скажем так. Вот. И в этом году мы э, хотим провести вот эту работу, огород для детей, которые ну, обладают малой подвижностью. Не говорим такое слово, как инвалиды, потому что это плохое слово, но дети с ограниченными возможностями. В этом году они у нас принимали участие в старте проекта, а старт проекта был 22 февраля. Потому что у нас в Волгограде, в России, создан институт семян, и люди, работающие в этом институте, как бы выдвинули такую инициативу объявить этот день днем дарения семян. Что мы и сделали, вот, подарив семена всем участникам нашего проекта. And this year we started also one more direction of our work. We started to work with special children with limited possibilities. I wouldn't like to call them disabled because in many ways they are more able to do things than uh, other kids. And we all already invited them to the launch of the project that was on the 22nd of February. Uh, I would uh, like to mention that the involvement of the special kids uh, is uh, coordinated together with uh, the public chamber of Lobnia a local uh, administration institution. And coming back to 22nd of February, it's um, the day of sharing the seeds that was introduced by uh, Volgograd Institute of Seeds. And we participated in this initiative willingly and we shared our seeds from Arc of Taste with all the participants of the project. Ну, цикл завершается тем, что осенью проводим праздник урожая, который обычно у нас называется «Собери урожай и пригласи друзей». И как бы вот это где-то бывает в августе, последний день лета, 31 августа, либо где-то на первой неделе сентября. Таким образом заканчивается цикл этого проекта, и ребята подводят итог работы в году. And, uh, the year cycle of our project usually finishes at the end of August or in September. We usually organize a harvest festival with all the participants of the project and we call it uh, Gather the Harvest and uh, Invite Your Friends Festival. И как бы с этого момента начинаем готовиться к новому циклу нашей работы, а основной такой наш цикл это Terra Madre Day, 10 декабря, когда все школьники, уже стало традицией в городе, готовятся к этому празднику. Началось это с одной школы, сегодня это уже весь город участвует. Администрация города выделяет нам самый большой зал для этого. И на этом празднике действительно праздник вкуса и праздник продуктов, которые были выращены. И самое главное, что вот этот праздник, он позволяет объединить людей разных национальностей. На этом празднике звучат песни разных народов. Мы готовим продукты разные которые, и блюда, которые готовят разные народы. Проходит выставка, проба. Много-много интересного. И как уже традиции стало много лет, в этот день проводится выставка «Улитки». То есть это конкурс такой на изготовление улитки, что вообще вызывает огромный ажиотаж у детей, каких только улиток нельзя увидеть, это просто прелесть. Поэтому вот это как бы у нас завершающий этап этого праздника. А дальше Новый год и снова цикл, Новый февраль, 
Мы работаем в школе, поэтому как бы трудимся по определенному замкнутому кругу. Каждый учебный год снова. And after that, our year finishes with the, the celebration of Terra Madre Day, that is the birthday of Slow Food on the 10th of December. It's a very dear and traditional holiday for us. It's organized together with the, the city administration. It's uh, 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 one of the biggest holidays in our city. We invite uh, guests uh, from uh, all over the country. We have the largest assembly hall uh, in the city for this festival. We organize tastings of the products uh, that were preserved from the gardens. We organize also uh, demonstrations of uh, food of different nationalities that are present uh, in Russia and uh, also abroad. We also organize some uh, craft and art uh, competitions. Usually it's um, a contest of a snail. We ask all the participants to make, to draw or to cook a snail and it's already a tradition. And as we work in school, Our year continues as the school year goes on. And from February, we start again thinking about the plants and the seeds. Праздник Терра Мадра – это великолепный праздник, который позволяет найти дело каждому. Кто-то клеит улитку, кто-то ее шьет, кто-то рисует. И самое интересное, что вот здесь объединяются традиции всех народов, и здесь появляются и рецепты наших бабушек, и прочее, прочее, прочее. То есть... Меня очень радует то, что есть это движение. Я немножко жалею о том, что я поздно в него как бы вступил. Вот. Но хочется сказать, что действительно вот это наша работа. И мы должны делать все, чтобы философию Slow Food поддерживала как много больше народа в мире. И для этого надо работать, конечно, с детьми. Кроме проекта «Огород на подоконнике» у нас работает проект «Уроки вкуса», который благодаря вот Виктории Смелковой переведен был на русский язык «Методический материал». Мы его с успехом используем и тоже получаем большое удовлетворение от этой работы. Я понимаю, что я ограничен временем, много хотелось рассказать. Я просто прокомментирую еще несколько фотографий, которые были показаны. Это проект одной школы «Посади сад». Анатолий, можно, можно я переведу? Uh -huh. so, uh, talking about Terra Madre Festival, I would also like to say that uh, we involve grandparents uh, They help to get the recipes with traditional uh, ingredients. We involve everyone from the very early age to elderly people. And personally, I'm, um, it's a pity for me that I got to know about Aramandra and the food movement so late. But I try to compensate it working with young children and young students. And if you... Mm, allow me, I would like to comment uh, just in few words the photos that were shown before. Пожалуйста, Анатолий, фотографии. Значит, вот в одной школе у нас удалось сохранить территорию. На, на территории был когда-то очень давно-давно посажен сад. И вот те кадры, которые мелькали в ходе моего выступления, это новый сад на этой территории. То есть ребята возродили пять лет назад сад. И сегодня вот это как бы тоже один из наших проектов, над которым мы хотим работать, потому что праздник Slow Food самый красивый получается у действительно Останкинской школы, потому что там они собирают уже и плоды, яблони начали плодоносить. Вот эти образовательные проекты, которые у нас проходят, они, как бы, я говорю, привлекают огромное количество людей. Вот у нас в этом году зарегистрировалось две с лишним тысячи детей только участвуют. Мы поддерживаем э, с разными фондами э, как бы связи и получаем семена от них. И вот сегодня мы будем, в этом году будем выращивать черные русские бобы, бобы, которые внесены в ковчег куса, и два сорта огурцов дети будут выращивать, тоже входящие в ковчег куса. В этом году наша организация «Слов в России» издала свой такой небольшой справочник, куда вошло 100 сортов растений, внесенных в ковчег куса. So the photos that you saw from of the apple trees is the orchard that we planted five years ago in the 
uh, last school that preserved its orchard. And it's very pleasant for us to see that uh, the plants are growing. And uh, coming back to the arc of taste, uh, I forgot to say that Slow Food in Russia uh, published uh, 100 arc of taste product book this year. And three of these products, uh, two varieties of cucumbers and the black uh, Russian bean, are uh, the three seeds that we will be used uh, by our project uh, this year. Anatoly, давайте. Я прощальное слово. Благодарю всех за внимание. Огромное спасибо. Я хочу сказать еще одну фразу, что мы вот в этом году в нашей организации Slow Food России решили проводить тематические онлайн-конференции. И одна из них будет как раз посвящена вот теме огородов на подоконнике. Я надеюсь, что, Вика, вы сможете сбросить данные. Юля вам переслет, да? И желающие присоединиться к этой нашей конференции могут это сделать. Огромное всем спасибо, рад всех видеть, удачи, до встречи. Uh, thanks uh, to everyone, and uh, I would like to invite uh, the Russian-speaking audience uh, to our meetings that we plan to organize uh, dedicated to educational uh, uh, projects uh, in Russia. Thank you all. I was very happy to see you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, to everyone. And, uh, I would like to invite uh, the Russian-speaking audience uh, to our meetings that we plan to organize uh, dedicated to educational uh, uh, projects in Russia. There is an echo probably from uh, January. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Can... Can, can we mute our microphones? Because there is a, there is a, rec a recurring echo. So thank you, Anatoly, for uh, this uh, submission. And uh, it reminds us of the importance of cross-generational knowledge transfer in, uh, uh, in the slow food gardens. It really works, work, uh, old people working with the young people to transfer this knowledge and uh, uh, working perfectly to uh, uh, reshape the future of food through uh, starting with people with uh, early ages. Um, uh, it was a very interesting submission. And uh, like uh, we promised at the, at the beginning of this uh, forum, we have uh, uh, working uh, translation or interpretation for uh, the uh, uh, different languages. Uh, what you have to do is to click on, uh, on the uh, globe uh, icon on your uh, Zoom uh, screen and select the language of your choice. We have uh, interpretation in different languages. Another important thing is uh, I remind you to, if you have any question, if you have any comment, please write it down in the chat <clears throat> such that the uh, speakers can respond to your uh, comment or question. Please don't forget to put down that question in the chat. Um, uh, we have uh, more speakers on the, on the list, and um, uh, uh, right now we will go straight to Italy and uh, listen to Valentina, who is the contact person for the Orto in Condotta project of her mother convivium. Um, uh, Valentina is... Uh, uh, I, uh, the convivium is uh, Stoford Livorno. Oh. Uh, Valentina coordinates and uh, stimulates uh, an extended community. Her work, starting with the vegetable garden uh, in schools, has made it possible to build uh, together uh, with the uh, Rivarno City, offering various training and awareness raising opportunities on food education, environment, and the climate crisis. Uh, Valentina will uh, talk about the, uh, the growing of a community and uh, the, the growing of a community of gardens and the training between school gardens in Italy and also in Africa. This is a perfect example of uh, a global north-south connection. Please, Valentina. Grazie, grazie, è veramente bellissimo vedere se anche così lontani, nonostante siamo così lontani, i nostri orti 
gli slow food in realtà sono, sono così, così vicini, sono così simili e tantissime delle cose che ho ascoltato sono le stesse eh, che facciamo. Sono veramente felice di essere qui, ma lo sono ancora di più perché questo incontro si svolge proprio a pochissimi giorni dal nostro eh, decimo compleanno, dal compleanno degli orti in condotta livornesi. Eh, anni molto intensi dove abbiamo fatto veramente tantissime cose, tantissime di quelle che sono state raccontate e abbiamo incontrato moltissime persone nuove. E per noi e per tutta la nostra comunità questo forum è veramente un regalo bellissimo. Io vivo a Livorno, una città di circa 150.000 abitanti sulla costa della Toscana, una città che non è, non è agricola, ecco ci sono poche, poche aziende e, e poco conosciute, io stessa fino a qualche anno fa eh, non ne conoscevo alcuna. E per capire come sia stato possibile arrivare a questo traguardo così importante che ci vede da dieci anni tra le città italiane con eh, il numero più alto di studenti coinvolti e infatti anche adesso, anche quest'anno, nonostante la pandemia, sono 30 le scuole coinvolte eh, nel progetto con eh, oltre 3.000 studenti. E prima di parlare di quello che abbiamo fatto voglio fare una premessa. Io sono social slow food da 20 anni, ma attivista soltanto da 11. Da quando su una rivista di Slow Food ho letto del progetto Orto in Condotta e, e me ne sono innamorata subito. E forse anche perché in quel periodo, nel 2010, i miei figli avevano 1-4, 1-7 anni e io credevo che per fare un orto in condotta fosse sufficiente convincere le insegnanti e dare una mano nella cura dell'orto. Però poi mi sono messa a studiare e studiando il progetto e cominciando a fare ricerche sulla rete, vedendo quello che era presente già nelle, nelle altre città, mi sono rosa conto che gli orti slow food sono nati per essere molto altro, eh, hanno, sono nati per essere molto di più. E allora ho pensato subito che mh, sarebbe stato egoista eh, fare un orto soltanto per i miei figli e forse il loro orto sarebbe stato il più bello della città, mh, ma non avrebbe messo in moto tutti quei meccanismi virtuosi che, grazie ai quali e questo progetto ancora oggi, dopo dieci anni, è ancora così in salute e è amato, è amato tanto, è amato da tutta la città. E uno dei punti di forza, sono sicura, che sia stato quello di eh, non averlo calato dall'alto alle insegnanti. Abbiamo fatto la formazione, certamente che io credo che sia importantissima, però poi ogni scelta è stata condivisa. Volevamo che le insegnanti si sentissero veramente protagoniste, si sentissero parte, parte di un gruppo. Ognuna ha lavorato al massimo delle proprie possibilità, anche in relazione a, agli spazi a disposizione non sempre, non sempre adeguati. I nostri orti sono molti diversi fra loro, abbiamo giardini grandissimi e già molto ben attrezzati e, e altri che non hanno veramente niente, a volte neanche il sole e che richiedono una buona dose di fantasia per, per poter essere realizzati. E fortunatamente la fantasia in questi dieci anni no, non ci è mancata. E, insieme eh, abbiamo coinvolto cuochi che hanno fatto laboratori di cucina, produttori che hanno regalato sementi, che hanno regalato frutta, che hanno regalato alberi alle scuole e pastori con cui i bambini e le bambine hanno fatto il formaggio 
e professionisti del cibo eh, a vario titolo che eh, sono venuti a scuola, sono venuti a conoscere, si sono venuti a farsi conoscere e hanno raccontato agli studenti e alle studentesse la fatica, perché la fatica c'è, ma anche quanto di bello c'è dietro al loro lavoro. Insieme alle insegnanti, perché come ho detto prima, ogni scelta poi è stata condivisa e il bello e il successo è questo. Insieme abbiamo deciso da subito di creare per la fine dell'anno scolastico, per completare il lavoro. E prima hanno fatto i contadini e poi siamo andati al mercato. Abbiamo creato un mercato contadino degli orti delle scuole, dove i bambini e le bambine insieme alle insegnanti hanno portato eh, in vendita i prodotti dei loro orti e anche altri tipi di manufatti che insomma sono stati realizzati anche appunto con, con le famiglie facendo dei laboratori a scuola con i nonni e questo ha creato anche un gruppo nelle famiglie è stato bello anche per quello lavorare a un obiettivo eh, comune il mercato è stato subito un successo che è cresciuto di anno in anno. L'ultima edizione in presenza, quella del 2019, ha coinvolto circa 100 classi per un totale di 2.000 studenti. 2.000 studenti coinvolti nel mercato e al mercato sono venuti naturalmente, era un parco pubblico, quindi un mercato dove sono venuti le famiglie degli studenti, ma anche la città tutta. Nell'ultima edizione abbiamo avuto con noi anche ragazzi del Fridays for Future e, e altre associazioni ambientaliste. Gli accordi per questo mercato, mercato sono stati chiari e condivisi da subito. Una parte delle donazioni è stata nuovamente investita per il proseguimento del progetto e il miglioramento dei giardini che di anno in anno sono diventati sempre più attrezzati e più belli. E un'altra parte invece abbiamo deciso di donarla per progetti di solidarietà locali, nazionali ed internazionali, quali l'acquisto di un carrello per rotto del reparto di pediatria del nostro ospedale, contributi per l'acquisto di un furgone a sostegno delle aziende agricole italiane colpite dai recenti terremoti e il sostegno a Terra Madre. Proprio per Terra Madre le donazioni sono andate a sostenere l'ospitalità delle delegazioni straniere di Kenya e Uganda, avete visto anche nelle foto, paesi per i quali abbiamo anche donato per la creazione di orti legati al progetto 10.000 Orti in Africa. Ad oggi sono sette gli orti adottati grazie alla generosità e al lavoro della, comunità, della nostra comunità dell'apprendimento. E proprio ieri eh, abbiamo saputo da un nostro eh, produttore che, che sostiene le nostre scuole donando eh, le arance per la merenda che ne avremo anche un ottavo perché visto che quest'anno il mercato in presenza non si è potuto svolgere, quindi non sono state raccolte donazioni, ma sono stati fatti solo dei video caricati su YouTube, quindi c'è un mercato virtuale. Allora questa azienda agricola che è gemellata con, con, le, con, i, nostri, con i nostri orti, eh, hanno deciso di adottare per noi il nostro ottavo orto in Africa. E tra i momenti più belli ricordiamo quelli legati a Terra Madre proprio. È stato un onore e un privilegio per la nostra città ospitare i delegati e eh, delle coltivatrici di ortiche, responsabili degli orti in Uganda e il primo gastronomo ugandese, John Wanju. Ogni tanto mi fermo a pensare e guardo indietro a tutte le cose fatte e penso a me, che in realtà volevo fare soltanto l'orto nella scuola dei miei figli. Ultimamente, eh, forse anche per i fiori che vedo girando tra le scuole, mi piace pensare di essere come un'ape, eh? un, un paragone insomma, molto importante. 
giro di scuola in scuola per controllare e per dare coraggio alle insegnanti che in questo momento di pandemia sono più che mai sotto, sotto stress, sono veramente affaticate da questo momento e, e quindi hanno bisogno di, di un po' di coraggio. Come un'ape prendo le idee da una scuola e le porto in un'altra, in modo che tutte possano trovare la soluzione più adatta e semplice per lavorare. La ricchezza è già nelle scuole, le insegnanti ortolane sono fantastiche, sono veramente strepitose. Io mi limito a diffonderla. E poi chiedo a Edi se posso aggiungere un punto al decalogo, mi piacerebbe scrivere che i, nor i nostri orti slow food insegnano a difendere i beni comuni. L'orto è un bene comune, la nostra terra è un bene comune e affinché continui a dare frutti a noi, ma alle future generazioni, dobbiamo, dobbiamo, ha bisogno del lavoro di tutti, ha bisogno che tutti si impegnino anche per difenderla. Grazie. Grazie. Thank you so much, uh, Valentina. Um, I actually agree with you that uh, uh, the slow food gardens are part, uh, one of the uh, best tools we can use to safeguard our common goods. Because maybe we can add this to the uh, safeguard of biodiversity because biodiversity is also a common good and uh, uh, the culture, uh, culture is also a common good and uh, the land, like I mentioned before that these gardens in Africa For us, Africans, they are emblems of resistance to the industrial uh, 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 monocultural systems, which lead to land grabbing. So they are one of the ways we, we, we actually safeguard our land, one of the ways we safeguard our ecosystems. And I, I totally agree with you. Uh, this should be uh, a very important point to add in the Decalogue. And I would uh, uh, invite uh, uh, later on, uh, 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 Annalisa to talk about, uh, about this in her closing remarks. And I think it's really a very important thing. And thank you for bringing out the cross-learning exchanges between the global South and the global North. We really appreciate uh, uh, this sharing of experiences and also sharing of the motivation. And now uh, 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 you've talked about uh, these cross-learning exchanges between Italy, that is Europe and uh, Africa. We also have an African speaker uh, uh, on the panel. We have uh, uh, one of the uh, colleagues uh, I, I have worked with for quite a long time, uh, coordinating the slow food activities in uh, uh, Burkina Faso and also representing uh, the Francophone uh, network of Africa. He has been, done a great job uh, in uh, resisting uh, 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 illicit uh, laws and policies on GMOs in Burkina Faso and the French-speaking West Africa, and he has done a great work in developing the African network in the uh, French-speaking uh, part of Africa. Uh, he's uh, Jean-Marie uh, Kaolga uh, from Burkina Faso. He will be uh, talking uh, about uh, the connection between the gardens and the slow food call to action. Slow food has, uh, um, is adopting a three point uh, call to action that, talks, uh, uh, that uh, works as our strategic direction as slow food uh, uh, in the uh, uh, direction of uh, preserving biodiversity, uh, uh, educating the wider public and also uh, influencing policies and practices which uh, you can summarize as advocacy. And Jean-Marie will talk about uh, the importance of this call to action for creating or strengthening the network in Africa, in particular, the French speaking Africa. So I would like to invite Jean-Marie to take the floor. Merci, merci Edi, merci. Uh, uh, bonjour, bonsoir à tout le monde. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir d'être là aujourd'hui pour partager avec chacun de vous. Et je peux tenter de dire que nous avons vaincu le COVID parce que je suis très content de voir euh, ces, ces, toutes ces personnes avec lesquelles nous sommes actuellement en direct. Et c'est vraiment merveilleux. Alors donc, euh, comme Edith le disait, effectivement, euh, 
Je suis donc euh, là pour vous parler un peu, nous partager sur euh, l'appel à l'action de Slow Food, euh, qui est euh, en, actuellement en, 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 en action, parce que nous sommes en train de travailler vraiment sur euh, cet appel à, à l'action, euh, pour que nous puissions ensemble, avec les contributions de tous les, toutes les structures du réseau, contribuer à formuler euh, cela. Donc, je peux dire qu'aujourd'hui, avec tout ce que je viens d'entendre de ce qui se passe partout euh, sur les jardins, c'est vraiment merveilleux. Et je crois que euh, Slow Food a eu raison vraiment d'initier vraiment cet appel à l'action qui va encore nous ramener à, à mieux canaliser nos interventions, surtout euh, en ce qui concerne au niveau des, des jardins. Donc, je crois que euh, pour l'intervention, j'avais vraiment le... Euh, le, le structurer de pouvoir parler un peu des jardins. Ensuite, de voir qu'est-ce que nous entendons donc par l'appel à l'action et voir quelle est la connexion que nous pouvons avoir des jardins par rapport donc à cet appel à l'action. Mais ce que je viens d'entendre sur les jardins, je crois que c'est déjà vraiment réduit et bien dit sur ce que les jardins comportent comme importance pour nous. Sinon, euh, nous savons tous que, comme euh, vous savez, le savez, le, le, les jardins potagers sont mis en œuvre depuis longtemps et particulièrement pour le Burkina depuis 2010, donc euh, près de 10 ans avec le projet du mise jardin potager. Et aujourd'hui, nous pouvons dire que ce, ce projet a vraiment euh, fait du chemin et a vraiment produit des résultats parce que nous avons essayé un projet phare de slow food. Et aujourd'hui, il est vraiment parmi les outils les plus importants pour véhiculer la philosophie. Nous avons des milliers de jardins qui sont donc mis en route au niveau de l'Afrique, dans les écoles, les groupements et tous ces centres qui sont, ont été intéressés et qui ont pu être accompagnés pour le faire. Donc, nous avons en Afrique et un peu partout aujourd'hui, les jardins slow food sont une réalité. Alors, pour les retombées de ces jardins, comme nous venons tous de le suivre avec le précédent, le précédent présentateur, nous avons beaucoup de choses dans la production, dans l'agroécologie, dans la biodiversité, dans la valorisation culturelle et sociale, dans l'éducation. Nous voyons que les jardins apportent énormément sur le terrain et que les acteurs du slow food gagnent vraiment en, en appréciation par rapport à cela. Et donc, nous pouvons dire que les jardins sont une contribution importante qui ont été marquées par, dans l'extension et le renforcement du réseau en Afrique. C'est grâce au projet du mise à jardin potager, le réseau est aussi aujourd'hui présent, étendu beaucoup dans les pays, les pays, les pays, les pays africains, plusieurs communautés. Et nous savons qu'aujourd'hui, nous avons beaucoup de force hein, par rapport à ces jardins-là et qui représentent euh, vraiment euh, une force pour, pour, pour notre réseau. Et néanmoins, nous savons que euh, la démarche de ces jardins, dans le suivant les milieux, les territoires, les structures et les acteurs, et bien sûr, euh, peuvent remporter aussi des niveaux de faiblesse et de force. Aujourd'hui, nous avons, euh, nous sommes dans un moment où Slow Food a lancé un appel à l'action. Alors, au regard donc, de ce que nous pouvons analyser sur la situation de nos jardins, alors l'appel à l'action de Slow Food, qu'est-ce que ça peut nous amener à considérer à travers donc, ces jardins-là? Nous pouvons dire que le Slow Food, depuis euh, 30 ans, est dans ce noble combat, depuis 89, pour vraiment euh, cette valorisation de la nourriture bonne, propre et juste. Et nous savons qu'aujourd'hui, l'appel à l'action est une démarche, comme je disais tantôt, de consultation du réseau international en vue de construire une stratégie politique globale voilà, qui soit en lien avec nos réalités, nos options et nos actions sur le terrain et qui va donc nous amener à une vision d'un impact vraiment réel sur le terrain. Et donc aujourd'hui, nous avons fait des avancées donc sur nos activités et l'appel à l'action veut nous amener encore à mieux capitaliser, à mieux centrer nos efforts, à mieux, euh, mieux orienter nos efforts, de sorte à pouvoir faire un impact, parce que Slow Food, dans, avec cet appel à l'action, a une vision actuelle et prospective de Slow Food pour un monde plus euh, juste, où l'homme est en harmonie avec la nature, la nourriture, le monde est pour un monde meilleur pour le et demain. Et cette vision se base, donc, comme euh, Eddie l'a bien dit, sur les trois piliers fondamentaux. Donc, une vision actuelle et prospective qui va prendre en compte et premièrement, la défense de la biodiversité. Deuxièmement, euh, l'éducation du monde qui nous entoure. Et troisièmement, euh, un grand soutien à nos, à nos causes et oui, influencer les institutions et politiques publiques et privées. Alors, donc, nous pouvons dire que l'appel à l'action est véritablement venu pour que nous interpeller tous les réseaux, à tous les niveaux que nous sommes, afin que nous puissions définir ce qui nous est vraiment euh, euh, de présent par rapport donc, à, à, à présent, par rapport donc, à cette... Euh, à ce que nous faisons sur le terrain. Donc voilà pourquoi Slow Food invite toutes les structures, toutes les structures, communautés, conviviaux, organisations nationales, structures euh, engagées sur des projets 
à pouvoir réellement participer à cette définition à travers le carnaval que le foot partage pour que chacun puisse remplir afin que la synthèse puisse nous donner vraiment de prendre en compte cette dynamique locale, dynamique nationale, dynamique internationale et vraiment faire, pouvoir faire des impacts. Aujourd'hui, nous voulons dire aujourd'hui que euh, l'appel à l'action concerne tous les accès, tous les projets et toutes les activités de Slow Food. Mais si vous êtes en compte particulièrement, nous sommes sur la question des jardins. Alors, en ce moment, on pose la question, quel rapport peut avoir entre les jardins potagers et l'appel à l'action urgente de Slow Food? Alors, nous pouvons dire qu'aujourd'hui, cet appel à l'action est une vision de changement du monde. Alors, à travers ces trois piliers, l'appel euh, euh, à l'action vise donc à contribuer donc à ce changement qui est attendu. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, nous sommes tous conscients que le monde est dans plusieurs crises et qu'aujourd'hui, cet appel à l'action se fonde euh, très important et c'est vraiment évident. Donc, si nous prenons sur le premier pilier, si le fou défend la nature et la biodiversité, alors nous sommes face à un monde de vie mondiale aujourd'hui ravageur de la Terre. Les rythmes actuels du monde, les modes de vie que nous avons aujourd'hui, nous sommes tous d'accord que c'est un modèle ravageur de la nature, de la nourriture, de la culture, des humanisants. Un modernisme suicidaire avec les différentes crises que nous connaissons. Donc aujourd'hui, l'appel à l'action urgente de Slow Food est vraiment fondé pour pouvoir interpeller et mieux encore recentrer, remettre en fait la, la, le nouveau combat de Slow Food à la, à, au, au centre vraiment de la défense des bonnes valeurs. Donc, si nous voyons que dans ce contexte d'un monde en difficulté, d'un monde en crise, l'appel à l'action de Slow Food est encore plus, plus important. Et pour les questions des jardins potagers, en rapport avec cette, euh, cet appel, nous pouvons dire qu'effectivement, pour ce pilier qui est la défense de la biodiversité, les jardins potagers constituent un outil très fort. Pourquoi Parce que la pratique de l'agroécologie qui protège la, la nourriture, euh, qui, 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 qui protège et qui nourrit le sol et les espèces, c'est vraiment cette pratique-là qui peut nous aider à sauver notre terre. Il y a aussi que les jardins potagers intègrent la production des espèces en disparition pardon, qui sont placées sur l'arbre du goût, donc en même temps contribuent à la récupération et la sauvegarde de, de, de ces espèces et donc de la biodiversité. Il y a aussi la, la défense hein, et euh, l'assurance pour les droits des communautés à leur alimentation locale par la production de variétés alimentaires locales. Et donc, nous pensons que ces jardins-là sont véritablement dans ce rôle-là et nous voyons que la réalisation de la souveraineté alimentaire pour les communautés. Et nous voyons aussi que ces jardins contiennent un cadre socialisateur et de valorisation de la culture, de la dignité des communautés. Et donc, c'est redonner une dynamique, parce que ces jardins redonnent une dynamique amicale de vie entre l'homme et la nature, et la terre et l'environnement. Donc, nous pouvons dire par rapport à ce premier pilier que euh, les jardins slow food, par rapport à la défense de la biodiversité, constituent donc une, un tremplin très fort, parce que ça, ça donne non seulement la diversité biologique, mais aussi culturelle, que nous souhaitons, nous souhaitons tous. Alors, pour le deuxième pilier, qui est l'éducation du monde, alors je crois que les échanges que nous avons eu tout de suite, que les partages, montrent également qu'à ce niveau, nous avons beaucoup à apprendre de nos jardins et que cela peut nous aider aussi à, à continuer. Parce que le monde actuel, comme je l'ai dit, est égaré et sans repère. Les crises se multiplient, les crises climatiques, les crises énergétiques, les crises sanitaires, crise de la biodiversité, crise alimentaire, humanitaire. Le train du modernisme ravageur poursuit sa course. Et l'avenir devient inquiétant. Alors, nous avons besoin d'apprendre, d'enseigner les gens à travers les jardins. Et donc, nous pensons que ces jardins constituent des milieux de valorisation, mais aussi d'apprentissage sur les connaissances, les pratiques, les expériences endogènes hein, pour protéger la biodiversité. Ces jardins constituent également des milieux de sensibilisation et d'éducation pour les adultes et pour les enfants sur les modes de vie, les comportements responsables pour un monde meilleur, pour assurer aujourd'hui et demain. Alors, nous pouvons dire également que ces jardins constituent un, un, un système de confrontation entre des pratiques dévastatrices des mondes égarés, sans repère et modernisme aveugle, une vie sans prospection conséquente, sans prospective conséquente sur l'avenir, avec un autre monde marqué par une attitude d'attention particulière et soutenue que ce que nous sommes en train de faire en lien avec euh, non seulement le besoin de vie meilleur aujourd'hui, mais aussi de demain. Un cadre donc de prise de conscience sur le fait que tout ce qui nous entoure compte bien aussi que nous-mêmes, que l'humanité ne représente qu'une partie d'un tout qui coexiste et sont interdépendants. Donc, c'est véritablement que nous pouvons enseigner à travers ces jardins-là, dans notre pratique, dans notre manière de produire, pour que tout le monde comprenne. Donc, nous pouvons dire par rapport à ces deuxième pilier que les jardins sur le tout constituent même une école pour tous. Et donc, nous pensons que si, à travers l'appel à l'action et à travers les décalogues, nous arrivons effectivement à définir 
vraiment des critères qui puissent permettre cela. Nous aurons vraiment contribué encore à renforcer notre impact et à, à faire vraiment euh, comprendre la noblesse davantage de ce groupe. Donc, enfin, le troisième pilier, qui est donc euh, de soutenir nos efforts, nos causes et influencer les gestions politiques et publiques euh, privées. Euh, pour dire que Slow Food veut créer plus d'impact, plus de visibilité, Slow Food veut conscientiser davantage, sonner davantage sur la tournée d'alarme, faire changer les choses dans les décisions, les politiques et les pratiques à tous les niveaux et les sociale. sociales. Et pour cela, Slow Food a besoin de preuves, d'exemples forts, de références. Et donc, euh, les jardins Slow Food représentent des outils de plaidoyer très forts. Et cela peut être relevé dans plusieurs aspects. D'abord, la communication auprès des communautés sur les jardins Slow Food. Nous avons donc une communication sur les jardins et nous sommes appelés à encore communiquer davantage sur la particularité des jardins slow food, qui, en fait, ce que nous avons défini comme critère, peut vraiment constituer quelque chose de pertinent pour euh, montrer la pertinence de notre combat. Nous avons aussi l'implication des leaders communautaires, culturels, administratifs et politiques sur la pertinence de notre vision dans nos jardins. Nous, avons, nous sommes interpellés donc, à aborder ces questions avec ces leaders en vue d'influencer leurs positions et leurs décisions. Il y a la capitalisation et le partage des appuis de nos jardins en termes de valorisation de la biodiversité, de la sauvegarde des sols, des terres et d'éducation des enfants pour la génération future. Alors, si nous capitalisons, si nous nous posons parfois des questions sur ce que nous avons de plus pertinent, de plus de résultats palpants sur nos, nos jardins, nous avons besoin de pouvoir avoir une communication qui est plus forte à travers nos preuves, à travers des arguments solides. Et cela va aider vraiment à ce que nous puissions influencer les politiques aborder vraiment les politiques avec assurance et pouvoir faire prévaloir nos, nos, notre vision. Alors, nous pensons que le point, point, point important, c'est le réseautage, l'approche avec autre structure de la société civile, poursuivant les mêmes dynamiques des jardinages responsables que nous. Et donc, nous pensons que... Et, allô On est ensemble OK. Donc, nous pensons que cette mise en relation avec d'autres structures renforce notre action. Et comme nous le disons, ils sont des géants, mais nous, serons des, nous sommes des milliers, des milliers, des millions, et notre nombre va faire notre force. Alors, nous allons dire aussi que ce qui est important, l'autre aspect pour cette, euh, ce dernier point, ce troisième point de pilier, c'est vraiment la création d'alliés très forts et stratégiques dans les milieux publics, politiques et privés pour des soutiens forts à notre action pour influencer et influer sur les décisions. Donc, c'est des aspects vraiment très importants. Et donc, euh, pour terminer, je crois qu'il savait donc euh, mmh. vraiment pour mieux répondre efficacement yeah. à l'appel à l'action, de euh... façon globale, de réexaminer nos actions et projets donc, pour pouvoir mieux cadrer et permettre que... Oui, pardon Thank you. Um, just one. Thank you, Jeanne-Marie, for, okay. uh, for the voilà. presentation. It's a... It's a... Uh, a hard task to explain the call to action. And I want to thank all the uh, participants uh, to this uh, uh, forum. I want to thank our panelists. Thank you all. Thank you for the wonderful experiences uh, shared with us. I think uh, if we develop this network further, we will uh, 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 have more impact on the food system when it comes to biodiversity, education, and also influencing programs and policies of authorities and also the people around us. So I would like to thank you. I thank our uh, interpreters. Um, um, I thank also the technical team, the organizers of this uh, uh, forum. Oh yeah, I hope very soon we will have uh, an opportunity to meet physically and uh, add on to what we have uh, discussed uh, in the last one and a half hours. Thank you so much and uh, have uh, a wonderful time and see you soon. Ashima. The future of our planet is decided at the table in our daily food choices. What do we know about what we eat? How do we choose? Where do we buy it? You can make a difference and contribute to a future where everyone has access to food that is good. Eating must be a pleasure for everyone. We all have a right to food that is healthy, natural, fresh, and seasonal. Clean. Being aware helps us to choose food that is good for our health 
and the health of our planet. Fair. Knowing our food means making choices that are fair to us, to the producers, and to future generations. Slow Food has been working for over 30 years to defend biodiversity and fight the climate crisis by promoting good, clean, and fair food for all. slowfood.com slash en and follow us at terramadresalunadelgusta.com